Shalom, brothers and sisters of Zion. This is Brother Brandon Judah Matt Duffy once again bringing you another video. And today the topic is going to be based upon color in the Bible. Yeah, that's right. The Holy Bible. Okay, we're going to be talking about color. All right, because when it comes when it when it comes down to color um, being uh, being talked about concerning the Bible. It's a lot of different types of issues. It's a lot of different types of concepts and viewpoints. Okay, as far as as far as some people in the Bible being European, such as white people, some people in the Bible being black people, some people in the Bible uh, being uh, a mixed type of contrast of color. But we're gonna clear this up on today. So the topic is going to be based upon color. All right. So let's get down to the point. All right. Revelation chapter 11. And there's Revelation 11 and verse 8. All right. Once again, this is Brother Brandon Judah McDuffie representing the Solid Foundation. All right. Bringing you nothing but the truth and the whole truth. Okay. So let's go to Revelation chapter 11. And we're going to be, be beginning from the 8th verse. All right, this is what it reads, Revelation 11 and 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of that great city, which spiritually is called Sodom in Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. All right, so this is Revelation 11 and 8. So let me back up. It says their dead bodies shall lie in the street. Okay. In order for you to understand Revelation chapter 11, you must first understand who are the two witnesses concerning Revelation chapter 11, all right? Um, many, many churches teach that two witnesses um, are Enoch and Moses. Some say Moses and Elijah. Some say Moses and Enoch. Some say Elijah, Elijah and Enoch. But you're going to find out that this is incorrect. These two witnesses in Revelation chapter 11 is actually uh, the both kingdoms of Israel, all right? These two witnesses are both of the kingdoms of Israel, all right? And um, I'm going to explain the two witnesses, all right? So right here you have all the 12 tribes of Israel, okay? But however, we know that the tribes were split into two separate kingdoms after Solomon uh, committed transgression and went in, and went into sin, all right. Solomon caused the twelve tribes of Israel to be split into two separate kingdoms, all right. So the one that you see, the tribe that you see on the line. They are the southern kingdom of Israel, which is Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, okay? They are the southern kingdom of Israel. The ones that are not on the line, however, is the northern kingdom of Israel. So you had the southern kingdom of Israel, which is the... Uh, the kingdom of Judah, and then you had the northern kingdom of Israel, which is the kingdom of Ephraim, okay? Or another name for the northern kingdom would be the house of Israel, all right? So you have the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom all together, which makes up the 12 tribes of Israel, all right? And this is exactly in Revelation chapter 11, the two witnesses, all right? The two witnesses are the two kingdoms, the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom, all right? So, let's go back to Revelation 11 and 8. It says, and, and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of that great city. So, it's talking about the 12 tribes of Israel, all right? The dead bodies lying in the street of that great city. The great city is no other than Babylon, which is America, okay? The United States. The USA, that's that great city, all right? The code name for the USA in Revelation is Babylon, 
And that's that great city. Okay? Which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. Okay? It's not physically called Sodom and Egypt. But that great city, Babylon, which is America, however, is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. Because Sodom reminds you of Sodom. Also Sodom and Gomorrah. And we know that there were a lot of sexual activity concerning the homosexuality going on in the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay, so the same thing is going on here in the United States of America, all right, which is spiritually called Sodom. It's called Sodom spiritually because the same thing that happened in Sodom is happening now in this great city, which is America. Homosexualities, gays, okay, women on top of women, men on top of men. Man marrying men, women marrying women, okay? The president, which is Barack Hussein Obama, justify homosexuality in this new world, in, 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 in the Western Hemisphere, okay? So this is called spiritually solid, all right? And it says in Egypt, okay, why is it called Egypt, all right? Because when you think of Egypt, you think of a place of pyramids, and you think of a place of uh, pharaohs, and you think of a place uh, of hieroglyphics and so forth. But it says Egypt, okay? And it's not talking about physical Egypt because it says spiritually it's called Sodom and Egypt. Because we know that the Israelites, they were in the Egyptian captivity during the time of Exodus, all right? You can read that in the book of Exodus, all right? The Israelites, they were in the Egyptian captivity and the, and, and the Egyptians, which are the Africans, the, uh, the Egyptians were oppressing the Israelites. They were ruling over the Israelites. All right? And I want to say the Egyptians had the Israelites in captivity for over 430 years. All right? If I'm not mistaken. All right? So this place, which is spiritually Egypt, Egypt, uh, is a place of bondage because when you examine the word Egypt in the Bible, it means a house of bondage. You can check that out at Exodus 13 and 3, and I'll get that for you. All right? It says, And Moses said unto the people, Remember this day in which he came out from Egypt, out of the house of bondage, for by strength of the hand of the Most High, brought you out from this place it says, there shall no living bread be eaten. So Exodus 3, Exodus 13 and 3 um, tells you that the place which is Egypt is another name for the house of bondage. So the USA, all right, is another name for the house of bondage. Because blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians were brought here to be the real burden bearers to this country. All right? This country was built off the blood, sweat, and tears of uh, Negroes and Hispanics and Native Indians, all right? All right? So the Europeans brought slaves to this country, all right? Just like those Israelites were slaves back in Egypt, all right? Those Europeans brought those same Israelites here, all right? Because the so-called black man in America today, or some say the American blacks or the Negroes, they are the real Jews concerning the Bible. Okay? So they were brought here by the Europeans. Alright? And the Europeans enslaved them and worked the hell out of them. Alright? So the blacks are the real Jews in Babylon, which is America today. And they is in a place of bondage, all right? It's, it's, it's not so much of a physical bondage today. It's a spiritual bondage because um, oftentimes they make you work on the Sabbath day. We're supposed to keep the Sabbath day. We know being Hebrew Israelites, we're supposed to keep the Sabbath day. But the Europeans, they make you work on the Sabbath day, you know? They also 
gave us their holidays, all right? We don't keep holidays. Then Hebrew Israelite, we as the people supposed to keep holy days, okay? But they gave us holidays, all right? They also gave, her, gave us um, Sunday worship. Like I said, we're supposed to keep the Sabbath day. They gave us Sunday worship. Change times and laws. You see what I'm saying? And, and, and a lot more things. But that's that's Egypt. Alright? America. If you don't believe me, you can go into Deuteronomy 28, 68. Deuteronomy 28 and 68. Deuteronomy 28 and 68 reads, And the Most High shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. See? Because the Israelites never went back into Egypt. After Moses delivered the Israelites from the hands of the Egyptians, they never went back into Egypt again. So what is it talking about right here concerning Deuteronomy 28 and 68? When it says the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Alright? That lets you know that Egypt concerning Exodus 13 and 3 is another name for the house of bondage. So basically, to paraphrase Deuteronomy 28, 68, it, it, it will read, and the Lord shall bring thee into, into the house of bondage again, or, or into slavery again with ships. All right? You don't need a ship to get from the land of Canaan, which is Israel, to Egypt. So what are these ships? Classifying. You would need a ship to get from uh, the west coast of Africa to the western hemisphere. All right, you would need a ship to get from the west coast of Africa to North America. All right, and this is how the so-called Negroes came here on cargo slave ships. This is Bible prophecy, all right? So concerning color, we know that when you examine history, the only type of people that went into slavery to the north, to the western hemisphere, which is North America, the only type of people that went into slavery on cargo slave ships were the so-called Negro. The Europeans did not go into slavery. So when you're talking about Israelites concerning the Bible, you should know that Israelites are different shades of brown. Okay? The Israelites are called up people. We're going to prove that. Alright? The so-called white man did not go into slavery on cargo slave ships to the Western Hemisphere, which is America. The so-called Negroes did. Alright? And this is biblical prophecy in Deuteronomy 28, 68 showing you that it says, And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again, bring when it says thee, it's talking about the Israelites because of them breaking the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Most High Paul. It says, And the Most High shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. That is the transatlantic slave trade, people. Do research on the transatlantic slave trade because this is no, no other than that. All right. It says, By the way whereof I spoke unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. He's talking about the land of Canaan, which is the land of Israel. He said, Thou shalt see it no more again, and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond man and bond woman, and no man shall buy you. So the only type of people that were sold as slaves, slave men and slave women, were the so-called Negroes. Alright, the so-called white man, when you examine history, the so-called white man was not sold as slaves for bond man and bond women. Alright? And they did not go into any type of captivity by ship. So we know that this is talking about the Negroes, all right? The Negroes, okay? The Negroes today, 
which are the real Jews in North America as I speak. The so-called Negroes are the real Jews from the tribe of Judah that went into slavery for breaking the Most High's laws and commandments. And we're going to prove that the Jews are black people and they are not white concerning the color of the body, okay? We also gonna prove that not only the Jews from the Southern Kingdom, but the Northern Kingdom, which are the Indian tribes, we also is going to prove that they are different shades of brown, okay, concerning the Bible, all right? So let's go back to Revelation 11 and eight. It says that great city, America, which is spiritually called Sodom, America, uh, at a high standard of homosexuality in Egypt, America, um, that that uh, the Europeans brought the so-called Negroes here as slaves. It says where also our Lord was crucified. Now hold on, now, now, now wait a minute. It says where also our Lord was crucified. Well, we know that Christ was crucified in Jerusalem, okay? Because Revelation 11 and 8 is all spiritual. As far as it being spiritually Sodom, spiritually Egypt, and also where well, our Lord was crucified spiritually. We know they crucified him physically once. How do we know that? Let's go to St. Mark chapter 15. All right? St. Mark 15 and the 22nd verse. And they bring him into the place called Gotha, which is being interpreted the place of the skull. This is talking about Christ. And they gave him to drink wine mingled with myrrh, but he received it not. All right. St. Mark 15 and 24. And when they had crucified him, they parted his garments, casting lots upon them. What every man should take. So we know that they crucified Christ, all right? The Roman soldiers crucified Christ. And this crucifixion is concerning a physical crucifixion, all right? In St. Mark chapter 15. So we know they crucified Christ physically once. However, Revelation 11 and 8 is talking about Christ being crucified spiritually. So what is this spiritual crucifixion? What is this spiritual crucifixion? I'm going to explain. They crucified Christ, okay, concerning the Bible. They crucified this image. When they took this image and destroyed this image and put up the so-called European Christ, all right? This is how this image was crucified, the son of Revelation 11 and 8. They crucified this image by destroying this image, taking this image out of existence, and substituting this image with a European Christ, with a Caucasian Christ, with a white Christ that we see in churches today. All right? Because concerning Revelation, Chapter 1, 14 and 15, that is, it tells you concerning Revelation, chapter 1, 14 and 15. All right? The appearance of Christ, it says, his head and his hair was white like wool. Okay? We know that the so called white Christ that is up today doesn't even have a texture of woolly hair. We know that the so-called white man does, does not even have woolly hair at all. All right? It says that's white as snow because when uh, the so-called Negro, when he gets up into age, his hairs on his head becomes white. All right? They become a grayish white texture. All right? And this is an older image of Christ that John the Revelator is seeing in the book of Revelation. All right? Concern chapter 1, 14 and 15. It says, as white as snow, and his eyes 
were as a flame of fire. Because when you read Genesis 49 and 12, it tells you that his eyes shall be red in the wine. Because Christ drunk wine, people. He drunk wine in moderation. Matter of fact, they called him a wine bibber. All right? Okay? It says, uh, and his feet like into fine brass. The color of brass is brown. That's the color of brass. The color of brass is a brownish color. Just think of a penny. That's the color of brass. All right? Okay, it says, and as if they burn in a furnace. So if you take brass and you burn brass into a furnace, you get a burnished brass color, which is black. Burnt brass is none other than the color of black. Alright? It's not hard to understand. Alright? Straight up, I told you we're going to get into color. Alright? It said, and his voice as the sound of, of many waters because Christ had a deep voice. You, we all know that the so-called Negroes have a, a, deeper, a deeper voice than the so-called white man. Alright? So concerning that image, that's what it's talking about. Revelation 11 and 8 when it says where also our Lord was crucified. They crucified the original biblical image which is telling you that Christ is a black man concerning Revelation chapter 1, 14 and 15. They crucified these biblical images throughout Europe when, when the Jews ruled, when they ruled during the Dark Ages. They ruled Europe for over a thousand years, and the black Jews left artwork throughout Europe, okay? And when the so-called white man came back into power, which is the Renaissance period, they crucified all those black biblical images of people of the Bible. They took them, they hired iconoclasts to whitewash all the biblical paintings of uh, the characters of the Bible, okay? And this is how the Lord was crucified. Let me give you Job 9 and 24. Concerning this. It says the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. Who is that? The so-called white man. He's the wicked one in the earth. Believe it or not. You look around, there's no one ruling this earth but the so-called white man. No one is over the government, none other than the so-called white man. So the earth was given into the hands of the wicked, which is the white man. He covered the, he covered the faces of the judges. The faces of the judges are the Israelites. The faces of the judges is Moses. The faces of the judges is Apostle Paul. The faces of the judges is the disciples. Zephaniah, Obadiah, Haggai. Zephaniah, um, Zechariah, um, Malachi, all the John the Baptist, these are the judges. And the so-called white man covered the faces of the judges thereof. It says, if not, where and who is he? So if it if so, if this is not the so-called white man that covered the faces of the judges, where and who is he? This is a question. And we're gonna solve this easily. Apply color to the Bible. So it says he covered the faces of the judges. Let me show you how the so-called white man did just that. This is a Bible by Charlton Heston. Okay? Alright? And we know that the so-called white man concerning the Bible is Edom. Alright? Esau became Edom. And Esau is the father of the so-called white race today. Alright? So white people are Edomites. That, that is their real, real biblical name. And this Bible is concerning Charles and Heston. So let's see what's in this Bible concerning Job 9 and 24 when it says that he covered the faces of the judges. Right? The so-called white man. Right? Alright? So, 
if you see this image, I don't know if you can see it or not. This is the image of God, supposedly, supposedly be. It's supposed to be the image of God on this side right here. Okay, let me get up. Let me get up. I'm going to show you. This is supposed to be the image of God. All right. And we're going to clear this up. I'm going to show you that this is incorrect. Because this is not God concerning the Bible. All right. So let's clear this up because concerning Job 9, 24, the white man covered the faces of the judges. And this is not God concerning the Bible, even though he tells you that this is God. Let's get to the bottom of this image concerning St. John 1 and 18. All right, this is St. John, okay? St. John 1 and 18. It says, no man had seen God, all right? St. John, chapter 1, verse 18. No man have seen God at any time. No man have seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he had declared him. So concerning St. John 1 and 18... It says that no man, no man have seen God. So if no man have seen God, how could you create, how could you create an image of God when no man has seen God? It doesn't make any sense, people. How can you create an image of God when the Bible clearly tells you concerning St. John 1, 1 and 18, that no man has seen God. But you have the so-called white man, which goes out and just assumes God is white. He assumes God is European. He assumes that God is Caucasian. However, let's see. Is his concepts correct concerning Daniel 7 and 9? Let's see. However, it says no man has seen God. But let's look at the inscription concerning God, concerning Daniel 7 and 9. It reads, I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit. The Ancient of Days is another word for God, because he has no beginning. He has no end. He's the Ancient of Days, okay? Whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. So it says the hair of his head concerning Daniel 7, 9 was like the pure wool. All right? It says that the most high God, the God of Israel hair is like the pure wool. Keep that in mind. Also keep the only type of people that has a woolly texture hair in mind, the so-called Negroid people, okay? All right, it says his throne was like the fiery flame. And his, and his wheels as burning fire. Okay? Okay. Now, let me take you concerning God. Like you've seen in that book, that's not the image of God. Okay? Like you've seen in that book, that is not the image of God. Because concerning John 1 and 18, no man has seen God at any time. So how could you create an image of God when no man has seen God. The only thing that you can go off um, based, ba uh, the only thing that you can go off concerning the image of God is the scriptures concerning the Bible. You can't go off and create an image and just assume that that's God, but that's what the so-called white man does. 
he goes off and makes his own images up. So concerning Daniel 7 and 9, we know it says that the Ancient of Days, which is the Most High Power, the God of Israel, here was like the pure wool. Okay? So, let's get some more inscriptions concerning the Most High God. All right? Let's get some more inscriptions. Okay? Daniel chapter 10, verse 4. Let's look at Daniel chapter 10, verse 4. And like I said, this topic is color of the Bible. Daniel chapter 10, verse 4. Because we are... Uh, We're going to prove the devil a liar. We're going to prove that he's a liar. He's a liar. He's a damn liar and the truth is not in him. This is not God concerning the Bible. We're going to prove him that he's a damn liar. All praises to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. All right? Daniel, 7, Daniel chapter 10, beginning with the fourth verse. It says, in, in the four and twenty day, of the first month, all right, that's the 24th, that oh, you, you can say 4 and 20, which is the 24th day of the first month. This is Daniel 10 and 4. As I was by the as I was by the side of the great river, which is Hedical, Daniel 10 and 5. Then I lifted up my eyes and I looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold of upas. So his loins was girded with fine gold of upas. It says his body was like the barrel. That means that he had on a green garment. All right. And his face as the appearance of lightning. And his eyes as lamps of fire. And his arms and his feet like in color to polish brass. That's the same thing we read about concerning Christ in Revelation chapter 1, 14 and 15 about how Christ, um, his feet was like into fine brass as though they burned in the furnace. So Christ was a black man concerning the Bible. We're going to prove that, okay? We're going to prove that later. But let's go back to Daniel chapter 10 and 6. It says, his eyes are lamps of fire, and his arms and his feet like and color to polished brass. So the Most High God is a black man. He's a black man, okay? Because Daniel is seeing a glorious vision, okay? So if he, so, so if it's, it says his body in Daniel chapter 10 and 6, it says his body, you mean to tell me that uh, that the Most High God has a body? It says his body was like the burial. In his face, the Most High God has a face. In his appearance, that means his vision. Alright, his appearance, alright? That means how he looks. Is of lightning in his eyes as his lamps of fire. He had red eyes just like his son in Christ. And his feet like into color to polished brass. So we know if his feet were like color to polished brass, the rest of his body was that same color polished brass. So the most high God was a black man concerning Daniel 10 and 6. And the voice of his words like the voice of the multitude. And he also had a deep voice. See? So concerning Daniel 10 and 6, the most high is a black man. Okay? He is not what you see right here. He is not what you see. He was not this damn color. Alright? That's why the Bible tells us to prove all things. All right? He was not this color. So I hope you're understanding the picture now. I'm going to give you something else. This is another image concerning 
this book, which is the Bible, as you can see, with Charlton Heston, this is another image in this book that they that they insist that is God. This is another image that they insist that this is God. Concerning John and 118, we went over St. John 1 and 18. No man has seen God. But if you wanted to uh find out the appearance of God, we went over Daniel 7 and 9 concerning that the most high God of Israel, Harris, like the pure wool, just like the Negroes. And we went over Daniel 10 and 6, telling you that the most high um was the color of polished brass. And we know that brass is the color brown. Alright? So we can see that this has nothing to do with polished brass. That's why that's why in Job 9 and 24 it says he covered the faces of the judges. Alright? So this is blasphemy. Let's skip over. And we have another picture of Adam and Eve. Okay? We have another picture of so so called. Let me put it that way. The so-called Adam and Eve of the Bible. Because these two pictures are not correct. They are incorrect. We're going to prove that. So I'm going to Jeremiah 14 verse 2 to prove these images that they are incorrect. Adam and Eve was not white. They were not Caucasian people. All right. Let's get Jeremiah 14 and 2. It says Judah morning. Now let's not forget when it says Judah morning, it's talking about the Jews because the Judah is the root word of Jew. So when it says concerning Jeremiah 14 and 2, it says Judah morning. Judah are the Jews, which are the so-called Negroes today in North America, okay? Um, a lot of people say, well, how do you know that the Jews of the Bible are actually black? The Jews of the Bible can be a, another type of color. Hold your horses. We're going to show you that the Jews, which is Judah, which are black people, the Negro tribes, we're going to show you that they are black. All right? So it says Judah, the Jews, and, and not to mention that Judah was the fourth son of Jacob, okay? Jacob had 12 sons concerning the 12 tribes of Israel, and Judah was his fourth son. And um, the Negroes, the so-called American blacks, the so-called uh, African Americans, the so-called black people come from out of the sea line and the bloodline of Judah, okay? So all black people come from out of the, uh, the, the blacks in America today, the American blacks, the so-called Negroes, come from out of the, the the seed of Judah, okay? And we are the Jews. So concerning Jeremiah 14, 2, it says, Judah mourned and the gates thereof languished, okay? Because the real Jews today in America, we are in mourning. We are in, we are weeping, we are crying out. We living off, um, we living off governmental benefits. We living from paycheck to paycheck. We don't have it like the other white people have it. You see what I'm saying? We don't even have what it takes to just seem like to get through. We are considered the minority. Black people are, are nothing in the white man's eyes. Black people, are, they, 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 they are not prosperous in the white man's eyes. They are not successful. They're, they are just, they just another type of niggas that, 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 that is peons, considered coons. They are stupid, illiterate people concerning the white man, all right? And we sick of being mistreated. And we sick of this oppression, okay? And that's why it says concerning Jeremiah 14 and 2, Judah morning, and the gates thereof language. It says they are black into the ground. So the Jews of the Bible are black people, all right? The Jews of the Bible of black people. Alright? They are black into the ground. And the cry of Jerusalem has gone up. So, when you read Bibles such as these, okay, 
Bibles to your kids, the so-called white man goes out and create these false images of the Jews of the Bible and tell you that they were Caucasian. But concerning Jeremiah 14 and 2, it says that Judah mourning and they are black unto the ground. Because when you dig into the soil, the darker you dig, the deeper, excuse me, the deeper you dig into the soil, the darker it gets. Because we know that we was created from the dust of the earth. But see, I'm just showing you, be careful, blacks. Be careful. And I'm talking about my brothers and sisters, my Hebrew Israelite brothers and sisters. So-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Indians. Be careful when you open up your Bible and begin to read it to your children. Make sure that if it's not a Bible concerning the truth, concerning the scriptures, all right, based upon what the scripture says, if it's these false images, do not show them to your kids. Because these images is going to stick in their minds. They're going to stick in their minds, okay? And your kids is going to grow up thinking that the people of the Bible were white folk. When they were not, the Jews are uh, black concerning Jeremiah 14 and 2. Okay? So I just wanted to show you that. So if the Jews are black, if the Jews are black concerning Jeremiah 14 and 2, it says, Judah morning, they are black into the ground. So if the Jews are black into the ground concerning Jeremiah 14 and 2, this proves that Adam and Eve cannot be white people because it says in uh, Jeremiah 14 and 2 that Judah is black into the ground so this proves that the, the dust of the earth are different shades of brown and Adam and Eve cannot be this color because actually the white man did not come on the scene in the Bible into the 25th chapter of Genesis. Okay. The, the first white man to ever come on the earth. Is found in the 25th chapter of Genesis. Alright. And that white man was Esau. So called white man was Esau. So before the 25th chapter of Genesis. Everybody in the earth were black. Alright. Different shades of brown. Different shades of the dust of the earth. Because it says Judah morning into the ground, Judah morning, and they are black into the ground. So let's look at Genesis two and seven concerning these false images. And the Most High Power formed man; he formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So the Most High Power formed man of the dust of the earth. So we just read in Jeremiah 14, 2, that the Jews are black and to the ground. So we see that if he formed man from the dust of the earth, we know the soil, being different shades of brown in the earth, cannot be this color. All right? There are also leprosy laws in Leviticus chapter 13 that let you see that the biblical Israelites were black people. There are leprosy laws concerning the children of Israel getting the case of leprosy. All right. They let you see that the biblical Israelites were black people. They were not Caucasian people. But concerning Job 9 and 24, the so-called white man went out. He covered the faces of the judges. You see that? Look at this madness, man. This is supposed to be God. This is supposed to be Adam. This is supposed to be God touching Adam's finger. 
Look at this damn madness, man. Look at this goddamn madness, man. I rebuke every lie of the devil in the name of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Okay? This is this is ridiculous, man. But concerning Job 9.24, the so-called white man covered the faces of the judges. That's why we went over Revelation 11 and 8. It says where our Lord was crucified. He was spiritually crucified. And I'm going to show you when he was spiritually crucified because today, um, today, when you speak of Jesus Christ or when you see an image of the, uh, Jesus Christ, which is really Yahweh Shai, who the world calls Jesus Christ, when you see an image of him, I'm going to show you this. This is what he looks like. This is what he looks like concerning these damn books, all right? So concerning Revelation 11 and 8, our Lord was crucified spiritually when they took down the real biblical image in the back right here. When they took down this real biblical image, destroyed this real biblical image concerning Christ, and put this devil image up, they crucified our Lord spiritually. Concerning Revelation 11 and 8. Okay. Alright. So they know the truth man. They know the truth. I want to show you this. Matter of fact when I got off work this morning. I went to Walmart. And I picked. I was just in Walmart getting a couple items that I needed. And I noticed this book. It's called. Children of Color. Storybook. The Bible. And look who's on the front. This black Hebrew Israelite sister. So these damn devils, man, the so-called white man, he knows the truth. And I went on and purchased this book because this is rare, man. You, you rarely see this in the stores. And like I say, when you begin to read this book, this is Nimrod. Look at that. This is Nimrod. And we know that Nimrod was an African. He was an Ethiopian, a black man. And you see how the white, so-called white man try to be funny, man. He knows the truth. But he refused to tell it. He puts books out and leave it up to you to decipher, to see what's wrong and what's right. I'm going to show you some more images concerning this book. It's called the Bible. Children of Color. Why is it called the Children of Color? Why is it called the Children of Color? Because the 12 tribes of Israel are all children of color. They are the children of God. And they are different shades of brown. Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Indians. They are all children of color, people. Okay? And I just can't believe, I just can't believe that I saw this book, man. I had to purchase this book. You know what I'm saying? You got Ruth and Naomi. Look at there. Ruth and Naomi, the crucifixion concerning Christ. You got the black man, which is Christ, on the cross. You got Christ carrying the cross. Look at that, a black man. Christ, a black man. The, the disciples, every last one of them are black. Different shades of brown. Okay? This is the Last Supper. And all of these disciples are different shades of brown. Not like the European last supper, supper images that you see. This is the type of book that Hebrew Israelite brothers and sisters need to read to their kids. Okay? Zacchaeus, black man. You see? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace. Black men. Because the Hebrew Israelites were black men. Okay? I mean, should I show more? Okay? Okay? 
Apostle Paul, black. Peter and John, black men. All right. This is this is wonderful, y'all, man. This is what you're this is if you want to read the Bible, if you want to read any story Bibles, make sure you purchase these type of Bibles. You Hebrew Israelite brothers and sisters, make sure you purchase these type of Bibles and read these Bibles to your kids. This is what your kids need to be seeing. They don't need to be seeing this goddamn garbage right here, man. All right? However, they don't need to be seeing this because this is not Abraham. Abraham was a black man. See, they don't need to be seeing these types of images. Okay? These is images of the devil. However, they need to be seeing these images. All right? So let's get more into it concerning this. All right? Let's get more into it concerning this. These are the apocryphal books, okay? The 14 books that were taken out of the Bible around the, um, some say 17th century, some say the 18th century. However, they were taken out of the Bible by the uh, Protestant Christians. The Roman Catholic Church took these books from the Bible, all right? And this is why today your Bible has 66 books. 60, the 66 books of the Bible um, also concerning these 14 apocryphal books were made. 80 books total. Okay? And like I said, you want all the 80 books total, you can purchase the King James 1611 edition. This is the first Bible to come into America. Alright? This is the first Holy Bible to come into North America. And it came in the 16th century and that's why you see King James 1611 because it came here in the 1600s okay and this has the 39 books in the Old Testament it has the 14 apocryphal books right here and it has the 27 um, t uh, New Testament books so all together this Bible has 80 books however if you don't have this Bible that uh, has all the 80 books and however, if you only have a Bible like this that has the 66 books, you can purchase the apocryphal books just by themselves. You can purchase the 14 apocryphal books um, if, you don't, if you don't have the King James 1611 edition. And you can just keep the apocryphal books in your Holy Bible to make a total of 80 books. All right? And I want to I also show you why the uh, Roman Catholic Church took these books from the Bible. Let's go into a description concerning these books. Alright, just to let you see because many people don't agree with these books. They say, well, I don't want to get myself in something that is not concerned with the Bible. I'm just going to show you a passage of Revelation that mentions these books so you can see that there's nothing wrong with reading these books. In fact, I'm going to show you something in these books concerning color in the Bible and what did these heathens do to this Bible. Alright? 22 verse 18 and 19. Revelation 22 verse 18 and 19. It says, For I testify to every man that hear these words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, the most high power shall add unto him the plague that are written in this book. Now, this is what I really want you to focus on. Revelation 22 and the 19 verse. It said, if any man shall take away from the words of this book, all right, of this prophecy, it says, the most I shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. So it said that if any man shall take away the words of the book, the most I 
the God of Israel said, take away your right from the book of life. And um, he or she shall take away your part out of the book of life and out of the holy city. The word that they took from this book is the 14 apocryphal book that they took out of this Bible. All right. This is the King James 1611 edition. All right. The first Bible to ever come into America. King James 1611 edition right here. And um, I can show you the apocryphal books concerning this Bible. Just a second. You see it says uh, the Apocrypha. And this is in the King James 1611 edition. It says uh, the Apocrypha. All right. The same thing. Okay. The same thing is just the 14 books are intact with the 39 books or the Old Testament and you have the 14 books in the middle and then you have the 27 books at the end of this Bible a total a total of 80 books together in the King James 1611 edition however these just are only the 14 apocryphal books by themselves but you can see that the apocryphal books which are these are in the King James they, they are in this 1611 edition alright and they was taken from the Bible why were these books taken from the Bible? Let's get into it. Because the reason why it was taken from the Bible because it's talking about color. They don't want you to know that the biblical Israelites are black people. So let me get that. I want to go to one of the books in the, concerning the Apocrypha. I want to go to one of the books concerning the Apocrypha, which is uh, 1 Maccabees. That's first Maccabees concerning the Apocrypha. And I want to go to chapter 3. And I want to go to uh, verse 48. All right. This is first Maccabees. And this is the Apocrypha books. First Maccabees chapter 3 and verse 48. All right. It says, okay, I don't know if you can see it. I'm going to read it. Maccabees, 1 Maccabees 3 and 48. And lay open the book of the law. What is the book of the law? The book of the law is the Bible, okay? And lay open the book of the law wherein the heathen, the heathen has sought to paint the likeness of their images. So the heathen lay open the book of the law and they sought to paint the likeness of their images who are the heathens the heathens are non-israelite people okay don't know if you can see this the heathens number two white man heathen east indians from india heathens assyrians heathens all right Syria, Arabs, Chinese, Japanese, Ethiopians, Egyptians, primarily to wrap it up, Arabs, Africans, and Asians, and Europeans. Those are heathens and Gentiles. Number one, however, which is Israel, are not heathens and Gentiles. But the white man, Arabs, Chinese, and Africans, and any other nations, they are Gentiles and heathens. Well, we know that you don't see a Chinese Christ today, right? We know that you don't see a Chinese Christ, right? We know that you don't see a Babylonian Christ. What about an Ethiopian Christ? What about a Liberian Christ? What about a not? Uh, what about what about? Um, do you see an Egyptian Christ? No, you see a so-called white Christ today. And who did that? Edom, okay, the Edomites. They did that. All right? You see a so-called white Christ today. All right? So that's why the son of First Maccabees 3 and 48, they laid open the book of the law. They laid open the Bible. And the heathen sought to paint the likenesses of their images. Okay? The white man did that. 
How did he do that? We just showed you. The son of these goddamn books. That's how he did. The heathens laid open the book of the law and painted the likeness of their images. Okay? Painted the likeness of their images. They laid open the book of the law, which is the Bible. Concerning Job 9 24. Concerning 1 Maccabees 3 and 48. Revelation 13 and 15. And he had power to give life into the image of the beast. That it, the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. What is this image of the beast that Revelation 13 and 15 is talking about? The image of the beast that Revelation 13 and 15 is talking about. That old damn image of the beast that it's talking about is the white Christ. All right? That's the image of the beast. That's the image of the beast. If you're teaching your kids this, if you're teaching your kids this garbage, you're teaching them the image of the beast. All right? He's the image of the beast. Okay? Let me show you something else. Yeah, the so-called white Jesus Christ is the image of the beast. Because you got to understand that Revelation is talking about the beast as of the Roman Empire, which is today is NATO. All right? So that so-called white Christ right here, he's the image of the beast. The white Jesus Christ. He's the image of the beast, people. Don't be deceived. Show you some more images. He's the image of the beast, right? So let's get back into the scriptures. Let's look back at Revelation 13 and 15. Why does it say that he had power to give life unto the image of the beast? All right? All right? Because they gave power to the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak. How does this image of the beast speak? He speaks through uh, the media, through, through videos, such as Passion of the Christ. Such as the Bible, the Bible series. Such as uh, biblical, biblical videos that has Christ in them as a white man. Biblical videos that has white people playing as Christ speaking the words of the Bible. That is how the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Why does it say many that would not worship this image of the beast should be killed? Let me explain this because this already have happened. This is the manifest destiny. When the conquistadors came in the name of uh, Caesar Borgia, which is Christ, forcing it upon the native Indians. All right? And whosoever did not worship that white image of Christ, they were killed. They, they forced that white image of Christ, which is Cesare Borgia, which is the son, which is really the second son of Alexander Pope VI of Rome, which is his son. They forced that on these native Indians. All right? And if these native Indians, they also forced that on the Negroes. It happened in the it happened from the 14, 15, 1600s and, and so forth. All right? When they forced that white Christ upon basically Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Indians, all right? They forced that white Christ on Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Indians and concerning Revelation 13 and 15, whosoever did not worship that white Christ, which are Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Indians, they were killed for not worshiping that white Jesus Christ, all right? They were killed. 
And like I say, this went on from the 14, 15, and the 1600s. All right? And to the 1800s. All right? So whosoever did not worship the white Jesus Christ, they were killed. Concerning Revelation 13 and 15, primarily Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Indians. All right? So um, I want to close this out concerning different passages in the Bible concerning color. Okay? Let's look at Acts 13 and chapter 1. And now there were in the church that was at Antioch a certain prophets, certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon on that was called Niger. Okay? And that is the modern day word for Niger. This is Acts 13 and 1. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers and as Barnabas and Simeon on that was called Niger. Niger. Okay? Niger. Alright? And Lucius of Cyrene and Manon which had been brought up with Herod, the Tetra, and Saul. So there were certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon. So Barnabas and Simeon they was called niggers in the Bible. Back then was Niger. Today is nigger. All right. So if they was called nigger, all right, it says Simeon and Barnabas, Paul, if they was called basically Niger back then, which is nigger, how can this be Paul? That's what I'm telling you, man. This damn devil is a damn joke, man. All right? How can these images... How can, how can this be some, some Paul, man? If How can this be Paul concerning Acts 13 and 1? How can this be Paul and Barnabas? This is damn ridiculous. 2 Timothy 2 and 15. Please study to show yourself approval, man. Let's keep it rolling. Let's keep it rolling. Let's look at uh, Jeremiah. Jeremiah, that's chapter 8, verse 21. Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 21. The hurt of the daughter of my people. Am I hurt? I am black. As I am black. Astonishment had taken hold on me. So Jeremiah was a black man. Okay. He was not a white man. Alright. So let's look at limitations 4 and 8. Their visage is blacker than a coal. They are not known in the streets their skin cleaved to their bones as it withered. It is become like a stick. So concerning limitations 4 and 8, it says their visits. Who is there? It's talking about the Israelite. So their visits, that means visage is vision. Their appearance, man. It's blacker than a coal. You already know the how coal rock looks. It's black, man, and it's dark black. It's probably one of the blackest rocks that ever. Um, made it on the face of this earth. And the Israelites are black. All right? Concerning limitations four and eight. Let's get you some more color. All right? Let's look at limitations five and ten. It says, our skin was black. Talking about the Israelites again. Our skin was black. Light in oven because of terrible famine. Because when black people go many days and weeks without eating, then their skin becomes darker on them. So the Israelites were black, okay, concerning Jeremiah 5 and 10 because of famine. All right, let's look at Songs of Solomon, chapter 1. Songs of Solomon 1 and 1, it says the song of, the, the song of songs, which is Solomon's. All right, so this is Solomon's book. All right, now let's go down to five. Solomon says, 
out of songs of song out of songs of Solomon, one and five. I am black, but comely, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon. Kedar is a blackish color. So Solomon is letting you know out of Songs of Solomon that he's a black man. Alright? He's a black man. Not a white man. Alright? Let's look at Job 30 and 30. My skin is black upon me. So what color Job is? Black. He said my skin. My skin is black upon me and my bones are burnt with heat. So with this... Like I said, man, I want to close out with this last verse in Revelation chapter 12, 12 and 15 that that serpent cast out of its mouth water as a flood. So what is that water? That water is falsehood lies in the sea. That water is this. That water is this. That water is this. Okay? That water is Falsehood lies in the sea, telling you that the people of the Bible were white people, telling you that Christ was a white man, telling you that Moses was a white man, telling you that all the biblical characters of the Bible were white people, all right, with his falsehood lies in his deceit. That's the flood. That's the water that the serpent cast out of his mouth concerning Revelation 12 and 15. Who did he cast this water out of his mouth at? It says the woman. That woman is Israel. Okay? That woman is the 12 tribes of Israel. Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Indians. That's the woman that the so-called white man, which is the serpent, cast a flood after. Alright? It says, so in Revelation 12, 15, that serpent cast out his mouth water as a flood. After the woman, he did that to Israel, that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. That he might cause these Israelites to be tricked up, causing the Israelites, these so-called Negroes around here, these so-called Hispanics and Native Indians around here, that want to put their damn life dying on that Christ was a white man. That you can't tell them a damn thing that Christ was not, that you can't tell them that Christ was this color. Because they have believed the damn lies of the devil. That's why it said that the serpent cast out his mouth water as a flood after the woman, after these Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Indians, that they may be carried away. And I can assure you that some of them are carried away already by the damn lies of this serpent, which is the white man. And on my behalf today, I advise you not to be carried away, to open the Bible and to learn the Bible. Look at the videos. Check out my videos on YouTube and be edified. Look at other camps and be edified and learn the truth so you won't be carried away by, by this flood from this dragon.